Now, for our announcements, does anybody have, well, wait, we'll wait until the answer. Yeah, yes.
the Sunday before, Deacon John called me after I had finished preaching at another church. And he said, will you come as a supply speaker next Sunday, which would have been on this particular Sunday. Remember that, John? I did. And the rest is history. <laughs> so it is our first anniversary. Thank God. Amen.
Thank you for your good feeling. <coughs> Program of the church cannot go forward unless God's people are faithful in their giving. Father, uh, if you come forward, and let us wait on you for a long time.
Words when they had finished eating and drinking in sorrow, Tiny stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Anna prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. Eli said, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. Amen. <laughs> You know that there were seven. Very beginning. Eve was a mother. There was Eve, there was Sarah, there was Rachel, there was Hannah, 
It was Elizabeth. There was Mary. All of these women were mothers. There was an anonymous preacher that wrote, an ounce of mother is worth a pound of clergy. <laughs> and that indeed is Amen. so, so true. Amen. I wonder, as I thought about that, when that was written and said, if the author did not have the person that I want to talk to you about today, in his mind, Hannah, and her desire to have a son, because that son would change the course of the nation of Israel. For those of you who do not know the story so well, let me give it to you. Hannah and her husband, Elkanah, they lived in Palestine in the higher region. And her husband, Elkanah, was a priest. He was a priest of the tribe of Levi. And if you know anything about the Levites, you know that they, again, were living among the other tribes. God set aside the tribe of Levi for one purpose, and that was that they be entrusted with worship and teach how to properly worship God. And so that was their main function as a tribe. Now, Hannah, if this has ever happened to any one of you, you certainly would be here. Hannah was caught up in a domestic triangle of three sided marriage. <coughs> she was deeply loved by her husband, Alcana. She was despised. <coughs> by the other woman, by the name of Hanina. You have to understand something. In those days, it was perfectly permissible if a woman was barren, couldn't have children, because again, the Jewish law, see, was again replete with having family and having children. So Hannah was not able to have children. Hence, the second one bore him children. And again, the Jewish mentality demanded a high big birth rate and a very, very strong, strong growing nation. In my ministry, there has not been any greater party than to have to counsel a couple who somehow wanted to have a child but could not have a child. That has been one of the most difficult situations to bring comfort and hope and cheer. The pain and the struggle for young girls who want a child and cannot have one. And so they go through the trauma. Why? Why won't God honor us and give us a child? I can speak not from my own experience, but I'm the product of. That happened to my own mother. After they were married, <clears throat> my dad was 29 at the time. God called 
called into the ministry. They wanted to start a family. My mother had three miscarriages before I was born. Back then, you didn't take fertility medicine. You didn't even know what it was all about. See? And so, my mom, wanting the earth, she came from a large family. She was the oldest of six sisters and two brothers. Eight children. South Philly. Row home. And my grandmother and grandfather were proud parents. <clears throat> they were also church planters. They planted First Italian Christian Church in South Philadelphia. And my mother talented. She sang, played the piano, and she wanted a child. She was reading this passage of scripture. She said to my dad, let's go see Pastor Spielberg, who had married them. And let's, I want that he pray for us. So they made an appointment. Listen carefully, this is true. Pastor Stuberg prayed with my mom. How many of you believe that Jesus is the great healer? Can you say amen? Amen. amen. And he prayed for my mom. He anointed her. Prayed that whatever was going on in her body, would be healed. In four weeks, my mother became pregnant. And here am I, hallelujah. <laughs> Followed by my two brothers and my sister. Amen. Amen. Deeply hurt. Had a pray. She wept. You heard the miss. You heard and saw the scripture. And she said, Lord, if you will give your servant. And that's what she was. See? She was weeping. Hey, if you will give your servant a son. She wept before the Lord. And all the while, this other wife, Tanina, and you read it. See? She again would taunt her, mock her, chide her, humiliate her because again she had the kids. She could bear them, but Penina could not. Let me tell you something to show you the graciousness of this woman. Now, she, the Bible never says that they got into any kind of a fight or twist. You know, that's just as bad as having two women in the kitchen. That never works, right? You know that, right? This is my kitchen. What are you doing here? You know, even if it's your daughter or daughter-in-law, right? You know, we do things differently, right? Mm -hmm. So, again, you don't hear that. But again, that desire for Dedicated young woman. Elk and I was a devout believer in the Lord. Every year he would take his family to worship at Shiloh. Shiloh, there is the, the, the place of Shiloh, see? Jehovah Sabbath, the Lord of hosts. Hannah wanted a son. She longed for this. Elk and I said, look, you know, if it happens, it happens. But how do you 
would say that too. See, God gives that maternal instinct. Hannah's desolation was peculiar. See, it was not only emptiness for her, but she knew that her husband wanted offspring. Her husband wanted maybe to carry on the family tradition or the family name. So Hannah had a plan. That plan did not include adoption. That plan did not include taking fertility medicine. But that plan included that God was going to do something special. And so what does she do? She makes a vow. She prays and she gives God a promise. There was another woman in the Bible that did the same thing. Sarah's son, Isaac was born because of Sarah's faith. And so she is praying and as she is praying, see, she made good her vow to the Lord. And what was that vow? She said, here it is, Lord, if you will give me a son, Look at this. Follow us. If you will give me a son, I will give this son that you give me back to you. Could any one of you do that? Moms? If you will give me a son. She said, as soon as you live my life, I will give him to you all the days of his life. No razor will ever be used on his head. He was to be a Nazarite like Samson was. And so in the providence of God, he did that. See, he, he, he did that. Obviously, Samson had to be weaned. He was a baby. And after Hannah weaned Samson, see, she again fulfilled her promise. She fulfilled her promise. Now imagine praying all of those years for a son and then Finding that she was only going to see him on given occasions. And what were those occasions? She kept her promise, but she was true to her vow. Every year, Elk and I, Hannah, would go up to Shiloh. Samuel would be there. What? Why was Samuel part of the priestly Eli's household? And you remember when God called young Eli. Eli was there to be a help, a helper. He was going to grow up in the temple. He would help. Eli with the pastoral duties of the tribe of Levi. But she never ever forgot her son. How do we know that? Because Hannah would make a robe. The boy would grow every year. And she worked on that robe every year. That boy was never off her mind and she would when they would go visit, she would present that robe, give that robe to her son and spend time with him. Imagine 
seeing your child that you prayed for. Think of this. This is a true story. It's not a fairy tale. See? And to see him only yearly. But she fulfilled her vows. She was a model woman. See? And in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant, gave birth to her son. Do you know what the name Samuel means? The word, the name Samuel means because I asked the Lord for him. Because I asked the Lord for him. And the Bible says, after he was weaned, she brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. I prayed for this child. The Lord granted me this child. She made him a little robe. See? She went up with her husband annually to make the sacrifice. Now listen. You know, God is so good. I love this part. Not only did Hannah give birth to Samuel, but God honored this woman, a model woman, because, this is true, Hannah gave birth to three sons and two daughters. Can you say amen? Because she made that vow and she kept that promise. You see, God in his foreknowledge knew that the people of Israel needed a deliverer. They needed a judge. That was a big human tragedy to say the least but the end of the story is so beautiful why and I want to make the lesson today Hannah built her life on the rock she knew that there was no other firmer foundation and my challenge to you women today and again especially if some of you have gone through the trauma as so many mothers have see Hannah was a model mother Hannah did not get her cues from Hollywood can you see that Or from the view. Anybody watch that view? You come see the pastor. I'm gonna pray for you. Okay? <laughs> Never in my life. <clears throat> see, that's not where Hannah became the person that she was. And again, you can be a model. You can be as Hannah, and the first thing you need to do, you pray to God that you be an example to your children. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a very normal household. I had a very firm father. He was the head of the house, and he made us know about it. But I never, ever, ever heard verbally my father ever abuse my mother or put her down or in any way humiliate her. My father loved my mother. That is where I was taught, not on the street, how to love a woman. I saw it in my house how my father treated my mother. 
Did they have disagreements? Of course they had disagreements. And when my father would say, Maria, we'll talk about it later. I knew that they would talk about it, but not in front of us, right? Yes, any normal couple will have disagreements. But my father always respected my mother. Always respected my mother. And the most important thing was the consistency with regard to worship. I failed to say this. When they went to, went to the temple, <clears throat> what was the first thing that Hannah did together with Samuel? When they went to Shiloh to make sacrifice, Hannah and Samuel, the Bible says Samuel prayed. How did he, where did he learn how to pray? His mother taught him how to pray. His mother taught him how to pray. See? And mother, your first and foremost obligation is to lead your children and show them how to serve God. And if you believe that, can you say amen? amen? Yes, especially single moms. You have to work. You have to provide. But the most important thing is to lead your family and show them how to serve God and show them how to worship God. And you do that by Saying, don't do what I say, but do as I do. See, do as I do. And again, you can have the promise if your life is built upon, hear me, a personal relationship a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You've got to know Him personally. You've got to know Him intimately. You've got to know Him that when things happen with your kids and your grandkids or what have you, the first thing that you do is to pray. And you pray. And you pray. And you say, God, give me an answer. See? You need to know the God of the Bible. Your family needs to see you read the Bible. And the most important thing is that you need to receive and open your heart and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. Last Mother's Day message was about Eunice and Lois. The mother and grandmother of Timothy. Say, where was Timothy taught? To become the leader. Not in a seminary. The, Paul said, the faith that I see in you came from your mother. Came from your grandmother. And because it was so outstanding, Paul chose young Timothy as the leader of the church because he could no longer be there. See? To be the kind of model mother, that's our message. You need, again, the support of only what God can give you. And I ask you a question, mother, and a simple question, and only you can answer it. What kind of example are you setting for your children? Say, if you take nothing from this message, the key to successful motherhood is your personal relationship with God. Amen. That is prime and the most important. Non-judgmental, 
your personal relationship with God? How intimately do you know God? See? The woman in Proverbs, the Proverbs woman, <laughs> read it when you go home, chapter 31. But the conclusion makes for a fine conclusion for a message. The wisest man that ever lived, and I want to tell you something, <clears throat> if anything new about women, it was Solomon. When I get to heaven, I want to know how he fared with having 3,000 wives. Amen. You can just about live with one. Amen. Oh, I said that, right? <clears throat> but the one I have is a, a beautiful wife. Thank God for her. Amen. <clears throat> but the writer writes, Solomon writes, her children rise up and they call her blessed. Her husband, too, he praises her. Many women have done exceedingly, but you surpass them all. And take this with you, ladies. A woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Can you say amen? A woman, not only a mother, a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And let her works praise her. Can you say amen to the word of God today? This is my prayer for each of the most beautiful, caring, loving ladies that we have met here in Berlin Baptist Church. Our prayer is that you be blessed, that you find joy in being a mother, in being a grandmother, in being a woman. See, and your joy can only be successful. <laughs> regarding your personal relationship with Jesus, not only on Sunday morning, but 24-7. Things get rough. There are problems when there are difficulties. He is there. You can always count on Him. He'll help you. He'll give you the strength He'll give you the wisdom. Just don't come up, don't fall to pieces. Stand on the solid rock. Just like Hannah did. Stand on the rock. If you're his child, he loves you. And he's going to help you. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I pray that you will, again, <clears throat> make it truth for each and every one of us. Be with us now as we remember your great love for us in the breaking of the bread. In Jesus' name. Let's sing together. There's something about that name. And as we do, deacons that are assisting in the communion service, prepare yourselves accordingly. Let's sing to you. Jesus, Jesus, there's something about that name.
Thank you. You may be seated. As is our custom, we <clears throat> ask that you be faithful in the <clears throat> receiving of the deacon's offering. This offering is used to help implement the work of God as <clears throat> we are presented with needs from not only locally, but <clears throat> through other institutions and situations. So be faithful as you give to the deacon's offering. Matthew, and we read, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, break it, gave it, said, Take eat, this is my body. Took the cup, gave thanks, gave it, saying, Drink, for this is my blood for the new, of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. The communion table is open to each and every individual. This table has no denominational affiliation. You've heard me say it once, I say it all the time. This is not a Baptist table, a Lutheran table, a Catholic table. It is the Lord's table, amen? amen. One criteria, let a person examine him herself. I will not do it. The deacons will not do it. They have no authority to do it. I did not die on the cross for you. Neither did any other human. Only Jesus died to take our sins away. Amen. Amen. What makes you eligible? Not what church you belong to, but all you have to say is, God, forgive me of all of my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me. And you are as eligible as anybody, anywhere, to receive the table of the Lord. Amen. Don't forget that. But again, remember, they had some problems in the New Testament because people were doing that and they did not follow this scriptural mandate. And so as a result, people got sick. They died prematurely. You've got to obey the word of the Lord. We invite you. The deacons will serve you. Just hold your element. We will eat and we will drink together.
John, would you ask God to bless this element, please? Lord, we ask that you bless us and bless our offering that we give to you today, that we come here and sacrifice and acknowledge your sacrifices that you have given to us. Yes. We know that your body is broken, and that this body tells us that we can live without sin, that we can actually have our Amen. sins forgiven. Amen. And that we, uh, we pray that you just help us and guide us, give us the strength, and we pray that you bless all of those mothers that, uh, that you provided to us and that give them this most wonderful day. And we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us eat together with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is still the same, and it will never, ever change. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remissions of sin. The blood has never lost its power. Never has lost its power. What can wash away all of my sin? Nothing but the, say it, church, blood of Jesus. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. Nothing but the blood. And we give you praise and thanks and honor and glory for being the supreme sacrifice once and for all so that we can be cleansed, your children, for time and eternity, that there is absolutely <clears throat> the righteousness of God because of your sacrifice. Thank you for the cup, for what it means. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Let us drink together with thanksgiving. I have one announcement and I'm very happy to make it, and that is this. Coming from the deacons, if any one of you desire prayer, our church is always open for that. If you would just like to come forward, Leftery and Betty are here to pray with you, a ministry that they feel we want to extend to you. So, as we sing, as we sing this last hymn, 
Oh, how he loves you and me. And you have a burden. You just need prayer. You need someone to help you. Aren't you glad prayer changes things? Amen. Yes. And we will adopt this practice after all of our services. You've found it in the bulletin. If any one of you want to receive Jesus or have a need or have prayer, uh, it is more important that we minister to you spiritually. And once you feel, the Bible says, where two or three are gathered, and we're family today. Aren't you happy for that? Yeah. Sometimes you just need family to gather around you and pray. Amen? Amen. You need that. So whatever your need is, just we invite you to do that. We're here to help you. We're here to minister to you. This is what the church is all about, to minister to you as you face a very rough world out there. So keep that in mind, and the altar is always open to you. And now let's form our circle and sing, Oh, how he loves you and me, as is our custom. Let's gather together. <clears throat>